Hello friends, welcome to Blog Bytes. Arbitrum, a leading layer two solution for scaling on Ethereum, released its token on the 23rd of March, received with much fanfare and hype in the crypto wars. But there is much more to Arbitrum than just a token drop. In this video, we will examine the other newsworthy developments besides the token drop and why it has gained the top spot in the layer two scaling space. Let's start with a brief primer on Arbitrum. As we know, Ethereum cannot be scaled in its current state. The core developers are working towards an implementation called sharding. While that is going on, other scaling solutions outside of Ethereum took up this challenge. Arbitrum is a project better known as an optimistic rollup an optimistic rollup is a type of scaling solution that bundles many transactions together, executes them, and then sends them back to Ethereum along with something called a fraud proof, so that Ethereum can go ahead and add these to its ledger without actually running them itself. This is what an optimistic rollup does. Arbitrum has two scaling products on layer two solutions. Arbitrum one, was their first solution. And Arbitrum Nova is their newest L2, which was released in August last year. Nova has been designed specifically for applications with many daily transactions, like games and social networks, which require even lower fee and higher speeds than one can offer. All right, let's look at tokenomics. And the main reason for this token launch was to create a decentralized DAO with voting rights to take control over both One and Nova from the original team. The token called ARB is thus a governance token. The total number of tokens is currently capped at 10 billion and will be distributed as shown in this pie chart. In the, the token airdrop, what is important to note is that the DAO called the Arbitrum Foundation will now control the two layer tools, the validator group, the sequencer group, and the data availability committee. We will return to this later as it is integral to the future of Arbitrum. Moving on, let's look at some of the basic metrics and see how Arbitrum has performed since its inception. Usage. Let's start by looking at unique active addresses for one and Nova. Looking at these charts, it is clear that both One and Nova have enjoyed a consistent ride, or rather a rise, in their user base, which goes way before the recent announcement. Here we have the graph for the daily transaction count for both the layer twos. Again, we see a consistent growth in transactions on both chains. In a bit, we will also compare how Arbitrum has done compared to other layer twos, but first, let's look at some other measurements. Total value logged is a very common metric used to measure a chain's financial growth or capacity. And as we know, DeFi is what drives adoption to any chain. And so what we want to look here is growth. Here's the TVL chart from DeFi Llama. As we can see, and after the initial drop in early and mid last year and the sideways trend till the end of 2022, there is a growth in its TVL. It is also essential to remember that the token airdrop has also resulted an increase in its TVL, which was not present before, which is and around 26% increase. This increase has pushed Arbitrum's TVL to $2.19 billion at the time of this video, which is the fourth largest. The next metric is developer activity. We all know that application usage directly correlates to chain and development efforts. Developer activity measures how well a chain can add and retain its talent. And again, we want this to grow and not drop. According to Sentiment, the developer activity has steadily grown over the years as well. 
And finally, let's look at transactions per second or transaction count vis-a-vis -vis other layer twos. From L2 beat, we see that all layer two combined have resulted in a 3.88 time increase in the number of transactions Ethereum has processed. I've added arrows to show where Arbitrum 1 and Nova were launched publicly. Within this cohort of layer twos, Arbitrum is currently at the top with the most transactions daily. It is almost as much as Ethereum and it overshadowed Ethereum once before could do it again. So overall, Arbitrum is in an excellent position. If this trend continues is something time will tell. But as I said earlier, there is more to this token launch and these new developments will be crucial in whether Arbitrum continues to overperform everyone. So let's look at the other parts which were completely overshadowed by the token airdrop event. First is the uh, creation and launch of a new DAO called the Arbitrum Foundation. Arbitrum Foundation was the main reason behind the token release. The team wanted to move the control over to a decentralized entity in the form of a community-driven DAO. With the token release, the DAO now has capital to control any changes to the existing one and NOVA layer tools. The exciting thing about this DAO is that it is a self-executing DAO, which means that it is a DAO based on smart contracts. So votes will directly translate to action on chain, eliminating any intermediaries in traditional DAOs. Now, the vital thing besides having control over the L2 is that the DAO now has the power to add any new L2s if it feels like, which means that the DAO can control competition in the L2 space by theoretically not allowing any new L2s to pop up. But a proposal process is put in place in case a dev team really wants to do that. They have opened up another avenue for those who want their own app chains. And this is the second new development. The team launched Orbit, a framework using which developers can create their layer trees on top of the existing layer twos of one and over. So if the dev cannot create an L2, they can create an L3 instead. However, they would have to pay the underlying L2 a portion of the free accrued, which is fine. The important part about these L3 is that they will be permissionless. Unlike L2, where a new L2 requires permission to be granted by the DAO, L3s do not require such authorization and so can start today. All right. This final section I wanted to touch on was decentralization. If you are a regular crypto Twitter user, you would have seen a lot of back and forth around the state of decentralization in layer twos. Layer 2s currently are not decentralized as, say, Ethereum. And it is crucial to understand more about this aspect. Layer 2 beats provide a beautiful graphical representation of all the areas where work needs to be done for Layer 2s to be called decentralized. For Arbitrum, the main problem is that their current validator set is permissioned, meaning that to become an Arbitrum validator, there is a process and not anyone can be one. Since the validators are responsible for submitting fraud proofs, in theory, they could collude and attack the chain. In Nova's case, another committee called the Data Availability Committee is an additional permissioned group of companies that adds another layer of centralization. Arbitrum has addressed this issue with what they call progressive decentralization. In a nutshell, they acknowledge that centralization aspects of their layer twos and plan to gradually move towards decentralization. The first step in this direction was the creation of the DAO. 
the DAO now not only controls the layer twos, but it also controls the validator groups, sequencers, and the data availability committee. It can work towards adding more members to these teams or find novel ways to decentralize. For instance, validators could partner up with SSV Network, a decentralized validator technology marketplace to convincingly decentralize their validator set. The token launch marked a big event for this year as Arbitrum became the leader in the scaling wars, as I like to call it. The future of this project is now in the hands of its DAO, and all eyes will be on it from now on. However, this is only one side of the scaling wars. The other side, which comprises of zero knowledge-based scaling solutions, is also getting heated up. With the recent launches of ZK EVMs by ZK Sync and Polygon. It is a well known belief within the Ethereum ecosystem that ZK rollups will eventually take over optimistic rollups. Still, nothing is inevitable and only time will tell. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. Do like and share. And I will see you next time with another fresh bite. Bye.